was, I got your number, right? I seen you up in this magazine. Dude told me you do some tracks, right? I want to be like, get what you make some beats. So call me back. I live in D.C. And I like to, you know, we get together and we make some money. I heard you dope. You the man. I got some fresh tracks and um, I make hits. I don't have no records out yet, but I make hits. So please call me back at them numbers. And if my mother say, I might be at my grandmother's house. If, if my mother answer the phone, she'll give you my, my cousin Bieber number. So let's whack this off, y'all ain't calling. Peace out for the nine Dance to the beat, jump for my feet. Dance to the beat, jump for my feet. Dance to the beat, jump for my feet. Dance, dance, dance to the beat, 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 beat. That's right. So now we've seen what happens when people start with censoring unpopular rock and roll songs and photographers and books, and it mushrooms into all of us being denied our access to information itself. When disillusioned, frightened people get used to the idea that being lied to and terrorized by their own government is okay. We're being told this is a war where nobody dies. 100,000 Arabs maybe, but they're not people. And for color commentators in the sports cast, we have magically rehabilitated Contragate criminals to show us the way to honesty and patriotic justice. Millions of people protesting this war all over the world. But you open up a paper, especially around here, and turn on the TV and they hardly happened at all. They don't even tell you that there were huge riots in places like Cairo, Morocco, Syria, where thousands were shot by their dictators. And it wasn't Saddam Hussein they were protesting. It was their dictators sucking up to Bush. And all those times, Saddam Hussein, our latest Willie Horton, offered to withdraw from Kuwait, which he did repeatedly. Whoop, they didn't happen either. And Ali North is a patriot. Our missiles are now called patriots. Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf is a sex symbol, and opposing the war is unpatriotic treason. Now we know what we are up against. A coup has happened right here at home. Our constitution and our democracy has slowly but surely been overthrown. And the head of the secret police is now president. I got your number, right? I see you up in this magazine. Dude told me you do some tracks, right? I want to be like, get yeah, what you make some beats. I want to be like, get yeah, what you make some beats. I want to be like, get yeah, what you make some beats. Meet the New World Order. Another concept borrowed from the Nazis. If Saddam Hussein is the new Hitler, then what is George Bush? How about the 20th century Benedict Arnold betraying the American people and what America's supposed to stand for for gangsters and corporations on a global basis? And is anybody here who hasn't figured out yet that Bush's own people planted all those stories about what a wimp he is to keep people from catching on to what he really is? Hitler had great ratings in the polls for a while, too. But just because people supported him doesn't mean he was right. And even the most bush-happy, flag-suckling jackass knows deep down inside that something is wrong. America is over, and everyone knows it. The New World Order has a dying empire odor, and changing the channel ain't gonna make this go away. Third World Malnutrition, 
pollution and AIDS getting worse and worse, our banking system on the verge of collapse, and we're more in debt than any other country in the world. Our cities and roads are falling apart, and the schools all suck because parents are too chintzy to pay for them. And yet Tipper Gore and James Baker's wife Susan still have the gall to blame gang violence and teen suicide on rock music. We are now being conquered and colonized from within. Beaten down, terrorized, transformed into a Brazilian-style third world plantation where a few super rich old money families have almost all the money and there's a housebroken middle class kept sedated with a few toys and massive growing swarms of poor people who know they ain't never gonna have a chance kept in their kennels at gunpoint by a heavy-duty run-amuck police state. Kind of like the ones our patriotic president helped set up in places like Brazil, Argentina, Chile, the Philippines, Guatemala, El Salvador, you name it, back when he was director of the CIA. Saw a guy over the weekend speak over in Berkeley named Noam Chomsky who's damn lucky he's white or he would have been dead a long time ago. He had this to say, quote, it's no big secret that what's called infrastructure is declining. The cities are a wreck, educational systems are collapsing, health care is gone. That's very serious. In fact, corporations are now worried about it. The reason they're worried is that all the Labor Department and other projections are that about 50% of the jobs in the next decade have to be filled by blacks and Hispanics. That is, by people who are consigned to concentration camps called cities, where they don't get educated, don't learn how to read and write, and only learn how to shoot each other and shoot drugs. Gee, I wonder who planned that. It's widely expected that there's going to be a serious shortage of skilled labor in the United States. Though when there's a shortage, that means the price goes up. When the cost of skilled labor goes up, transnational corporations are going to go somewhere where it's cheaper, meaning everything from research to typing will be sought out somewhere else where there is ample skilled labor. It might even be the third world, where educational systems are not so, as he puts it, unimpressive. Especially the new third world that they're hoping to open up in Eastern Europe. The question is, what happens to the United States? There's always the job of mercenary. Somebody has to keep the third world under control, and the United States is the only one with the force to do it. Thanks to the Soviet economy finally imploding, there is no deterrent against us anymore. We may not have the economic base, therefore others are going to have to pay the United States for this. Germany and Japan aren't all that eager to pay for it, but petrodollars are still there. This is George Bush's visionary way of leading us into the future and solving our problems at home. No peace dividend economy, no cleanup of the environment or urban renewal, no future for children, just a genocide for hire, new world order. Who is the next Saddam Hussein? Gaddafi? Hafez Assad? Peru, Colombia, Mexico, us. Now Bush says, quote, the kind of moral force and national will that massacred a hundred or thousand or more Iraqi men, women, and children, many of whom in the photos look like they've been shot in the back, will be turned and focused on his, quote, war on crime. And the drug war concentration camps are already going up. And last fall, Congress almost passed a law saying they could hold any one of us in jail for up to a year 
just on suspicion of using drugs. And Bush also wants a law where workers who go on strike can be permanently fired. And he's also trying to sneak it through so radioactive waste can be dumped anywhere, including town and city sewers. And the media does their parts by just hinting that fighting back and fixing things, well, it, it just looks so hard, don't even try. So now, we have a mass case of people so afraid of being hit with the truth, they go out of their way to avoid finding out what it is. This brings to mind the Nuremberg Trials, where defendants justified their war crimes saying they were just going along, following orders. They didn't ask questions because they were afraid and didn't want to know what the answers were. But, we haven't allowed things to get quite that far yet. And that is why we're fed so many lies by the straight corporate press. Have you ever seen so much obviously fabricated news? Have you ever seen them go so far out of their way to deny what we see with our own eyes? Does anyone sense some frantic desperation here? We should congratulate ourselves for this. This is very much in our favor. This shows how scared their bosses are of us. They know better than anybody that 90% of the people don't support George Bush. They know better than anybody about our power and our numbers. They just wish we were as dumb as American schools are designed to make us. That's why it's supposed to look like they got this over quick. No mess, not a speck of cereal. That's why they launched another war going on right now against our alternative and underground culture. Boy, do they go out of their way to trash the conscious side of the 60s. You were grooving on rock in the mud at Woodstock instead of making money in babies. Shame. Trying to make everyone who stood up and rebelled against the Vietnam War and worked for civil rights and the environment to look bad and unpatriotic. As if to say, don't ever try anything like that again. Because it worked a little too well. From now on, this is what goes. No one is homeless. Racism is hip. Pollution is progress. And the cops are our friends. And don't you dare spread any information hostile to the financial interests of the new, new world order. But this ain't El Salvador yet, thankfully. And the main thing keeping that from happening is us. There are times when our government gets so frightened it does kill like the Black Panthers, the American Indian Movement, and now they have a new target, environmentalists. Most of you know about Judy Berry and Daryl Cherney getting blown up in an assassination attempt in a car. And I saw Judy Berry speak over at a church of all places, the Noe Valley Ministry, and she said the only reason she's probably still alive after the first attempt didn't work is so many people making so much noise about what went down. She said that Greenpeace gave them money to hire a private detective and they traced the person in charge of trying to wipe out Earth First and the radical environmental movement as being Richard Held, the same FBI guy who was there when they killed Fred Hampton and Mark Clark of the Black Panthers in Chicago, the same guy in charge when they killed dozens, if not hundreds, of American Indian Movement members in South Dakota. Here they are again with the Nixon heads in charge. As she put it, the only reason we don't have death squads in this country is they don't think they need them yet. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you.